It's giveaway time guys, so I want to let you guys know on a giveaway we're doing. Simplistic Garage ended up reaching out and wanted to do a giveaway for you guys. So we're going to be giving out a full 75mm throttle body kit to one of you guys. As some of you guys may know, I actually run that kit on my G35. So here is the kit that I'm talking about. So we got the adapter, we have the throttle body, we got all the bolts. So now to join the giveaway, go ahead and go on my Instagram and check out this post right here on screen. So it's really easy to join the giveaway. All you have to do is go ahead and follow me on Instagram, follow Simplistic Garage garage on their Instagram and then go ahead and comment on the post and tag two of your buddies just to let them know. That's all you need to do and you're automatically entered on the giveaway. So the giveaway will last up until June 26th of 2021. Go ahead and enter before it's too late and best of luck to you guys. So this is another episode on the track build that we're doing for the G35. So we've done a couple mods to help prep the G35 for the track. So this is a mod that's actually very common to do if you are gonna be beating on your car. It's one of the first things you really upgrade when you're doing any cooling to your car. And that of course is your radiator. Here we have a Koyo Red radiator and I ended up picking this up because it's one of the best ones you can really get. It was in between a Koyo Red radiator or a Mishimoto. I ended up going with the Koyo Red just because I've heard really good stuff about them. I've heard really good stuff about the Mishimoto one as well but I've heard that the quality on these is a lot a lot better along with the coil ride radiator I ended up picking up another glow shift gauge and this one is my water temp if you guys saw one of my previous videos I ended up installing an oil temp and oil pressure gauge so this is another gauge that we're going to install into the gauge pod I'm not entirely sure if we'll end up getting to this in time we might have to do this for a different video but I did pick one up I also picked up some z1 coolant hoses just so I have some really nice hoses to go along with it these are silicone hoses they'll last a lot longer than your rubber hoses I also ended up picking up an OEM thermostat and I have the gasket to go along with it So I have the car on jack stands already so it's already lifted up I took a couple pieces off of the air filter just to have some room to work with So we have to do is go under the car drain the coolant Then we'll be able to take off the rest of the stuff since it is still filled up with coolant oh. Oh. <laughs> uh oh, that's gonna feel quick. No Oh no! No! Alright guys, so I ended up draining the coolant and I ended up making a mess. I hate it that I ended up making this mess. I had to get the kitty litter out and clean it all up. First thing we have to do is disconnect the fans from the radiator. So there's two bolts, one on this side and one on the other side. There are two connectors for the fans in the bottom as you can see right there. Those are pretty easy to see. Just disconnect those two and you should be good to go. Well, let's go ahead and disconnect the fans. Alright guys, so as I was taking off the upper radiator hose, I ended up seeing how brittle this plastic really was. I was starting to pry on it and this just gave out. Out and it just broke this just really shows how worn out the plastic really does get over time it's brittle now so it just broke off really easily so the good thing is we are upgrading it to an aluminum radiator so we won't have that problem this is definitely going to dissipate heat a lot better and it's going to last a lot longer so one of the things that I ended up doing research on was if the OEM fans could stand up to the track temperatures and make sure to cool down the car appropriately. Unless you're creating a bunch of heat, there's no real reason for you to end up upgrading them to any other ones. The only thing I've seen people that track their G35s do is they end up going with a controller so they can go ahead and switch the fans on earlier because the fans turn on once it's a little too hot on the track for them. So they ended up getting a controller so they can control when they kick on. Now that we took the fans out, we're going to have to take off two bolts that hold the radiator to the radiator support so once you take off those two 10 millimeter bolts you go ahead and take off these locks on each side and you should be able to take out the radiator after that So here we have the old radiator and then we have the coil rad right behind it and you can see the difference of how thick it actually is. This is a pretty big difference back to back. I'd say about double the size of the stock one. And again, this is all aluminum construction so I don't have to worry about much with it in comparison to the plastic one which already broke so I can't even use this if I wanted to. Definitely an upgrade just as a maintenance item as well just because radiators do end up breaking down over time and there can be cracks or you can just have leaks throughout. This definitely will come in handy with the track and daily driving it's just going to be a peace of mind that i replaced this part with a quality one <laughs> he wants me to ride it and i've never ridden a motorcycle or a pit bike so 
Let's see how that goes. That, uh, yeah, that's probably good. Kick it hard. There you go. More gas. Well, wah, wah. I don't know anything about motorcycles. You know what, Joe? You just gotta remember, man. It's like sex, but different. There you go. Oh. I feel oh. like I'm learning manual again. <laughs> 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 dude, that hits so hard. It does, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> the motorcycle's going normally, and then you just feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what is happening? That was me riding the pit bike. I know nothing about motorcycles, so that was just a really cool experience to have. It's really fun, kind of crazy. I mean, that's my first time, so I didn't know what to expect, but it's really fun. So, a little update for you guys. It has been a minute. One of the things that was really hard to do was to go ahead and put the spring clamps back on, so I had to go ahead and go with regular clamps just because it's really, really hard to put back the clamps on. I also installed the thermostat, and I put a clamp right there because this spring clamp ended up breaking on me as I was trying to remove it. The only thing left to do now is go ahead and put the radiator on and then put the fans on. I am going to be putting the hoses at the end just so that it's a little bit easier. That should be it and I also have a tool that I'm going to show you guys that helps out with bleeding this car super easy so you don't even have to worry about bleeding it. Let me go ahead and install everything on the car now and hopefully it doesn't take too long. Last clip you guys saw me refilling the coolant system and I ended up using this machine right here so I can go ahead and refill it without having to bleed the system which is really convenient. The way it works is it creates vacuum using the air compressor and then once it sucks all the air out of the system it collapses all the hoses in the coolant system. After that you route this hose into a bucket full of all the coolant you're going to be using so that way you can have it all in one bucket. So when you turn a lever and then all of the coolant starts going into the system, zero bubbles, you don't need to bleed it afterwards and it's really clean. I already turned on the car to make sure it's not overheating, no overheating issues so it's all good to go. Really quick, really simple and it makes it less of a hassle than if trying to bleed it through the bleeder screw and everything else. I'm not going to have time to install the water temp sensor today so I am going to be doing that in another video. So make sure you guys stay tuned, this is going to be a really cool video just showing you guys how I do it and I'm probably going to end up routing it into the coil rad radiator. I have so much stuff that I needed to do just so I can take off a couple things. Things. I definitely need to clean up so I will see you guys when I'm done Alright guys, so it is the next day and I ended up bending everything up So the car hasn't overheated doing that method. I have had no problems with it I drove it around for a good while. I've had no issues The only thing I needed to do was refill the reservoir and that's about it But besides that everything is fine. I didn't have time to install the water temp sensor So I will be doing that in the next upcoming videos One thing I did notice is that these locks are actually a lot tighter than in the stock one in the stock one The whole radiator actually moved and this one it stays in place. I also need to put the air intake and also the shield to cover the air filter but besides that it's basically done. Coil Red actually doesn't approve of you just using distilled water even though I am going to be taking it to the track and distilled water will work a little bit better. They recommend just putting 50-50 mix or else it does void the warranty of the radiator. But with that being said guys I hope you did enjoy this video. Give it a like if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Plenty of G35 content on the channel. You guys hear me say that all the time. Also don't forget about the giveaway so you could go ahead and win yourself a big throttle body kit from Simplistic Garage and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.